Thank you. Thank you, Joes. Good morning, everyone. Looks like there's a bit of a buzz that we can see with the Beckon Experience Center that Nandan just unveiled. So pretty much, I think whatever I talk is not going to top that in any ways. Uh, but thank you so much for showing up today and uh, having Beckon the spotlight uh, for this, this year's event at ICT. Uh, thank you, Joes, for enabling that. Um, so Nandan spoke about a lot of things. And I think there are two things that I'm very passionate about from Nandan spoke about. The first thing is what India is trying to do with its digital story to solve for population scale problems, looking at digital public goods or this minimal tech and solving for population scale issues. And the second thing that I'm not uh, passionate about, oops, uh, is the idea, the very idea of internet itself that Nandan spoke about. Okay, uh, how this very small limited stack of open protocols that internet essentially is, could sort of bring the whole world, the whole civilization into this new age that we are living in and literally slinging us into the future every few weeks. Look at where ChatGPT is going today, for example. So that's a fascinating civilization scale technology that I'm very passionate about. How does that enable by doing very limited and a bit of enabling and let others solve and build innovation and, and, and solutions on top of that? But there was another such civilization scale technology that I want to just make you recall. If you dial back time to about roughly 200 years ago, 150 years ago, there was another civilization called technology in the form of physical railroads, rail, railways, which was at its origins controlled as a private technology by a few industrialists. And they decided how these railroads could be used to transport goods and services. But they came along a time when um, somebody said, no, this technology should be a public infrastructure a public infrastructure which everybody should use to benefit not just themselves but the country at large. And if my memory and my understanding of history serves me right, that change of a technology like railroads and opening it as public infrastructure sort of catapulted America ahead of Europe in terms of economic development. That's the power of technology to literally drive economic development at population and at civilization scale. Yeah. It is with this context uh, that I want to talk about, and internet, of course, if you talk about internet, internet was, has been an open digital public infrastructure. But I'm not too sure with internet, the economy in internet, what we come to call as digital economy, is that open enough. Nandan spoke about the need to have a discussion about how digital economy, how do we open up that architecture so that even the economy on top of a digital public good on internet probably needs more solving, needs to be more inclusive and fair. And it's in that context that I thought I'll expand on some of the things that Nandan just mentioned, talk about Beckin in a bit more detail. Uh, so obviously, this was an idea put together by FIDE. FIDE is uh, the organization that I represent. It's a, it's a not-for-profit foundation. It expands into Foundation for Interoperability in Digital Economy. Uh, the whole idea was to sort of think of this as an open source movement that FIDE could start nudging, foster an open community around this idea of a protocol that we first attempted to write as some of the gen early Genesis authors as FIDE, but today it is a wider open collective that is contributing to this evolution. Think of it a bit like how Linux took off as a community through a little foundation and today you have a wider community. So that's been the journey that we could create with this organization as FIDE under the fantastic mentorship. It's an honor, privilege to be, to be learning from uh, the likes of Nandan and Pramod here to be enabling this. Now, before I get into the details of Beckin, I know somebody have already seen the experience. Ravi could eloquently present with what power of interoperability is. Uh, that's, that's in the stall here. But there's a live implementation of a Beckin protocol happening on ground. And I'm sure you will spend time at the Namayatri stall. But Namayatri is a story that I want to particularly talk about as a story where Beckin is not just an idea, but it's, it's adopted. And we are seeing early signs of disruption happening with the concept of Beckin. So Namayatri, for those who haven't tried and those watching this online from other parts of the world, Namayatri is an initiative by JustPay, a fantastic fintech company, perhaps never done mobility before, but working along with a driver community coming together and creating this decentralized interoperable network where drivers can by, the, by themselves hail rides on their own without depending on any sort of a central intermediary or a central player to help them generate rides and manage them, and therefore have them having control on pricing and other things. This is a story 
That's just started in November, and we are already seeing some form of a curve taking off. Today we are talking about 45,000 drivers by their own choice, by their own sort of autonomy coming, working on defining the price that they should operate from, and do 14,000 rides a day in just about five months, and we have significant amount of users, riders, in Bangalore, about 400,000 of them, uh, using, Beck, uh, using Becker enabled Namayatri application already. This is a story which I think, and, I, and I've been traveling a little bit across Europe and other, other parts of the world, and I realized that this, what Namayatri is trying to solve is not just a uh, solution relevant for Bangalore or other parts of India, but it's a relevant solution for the rest of the world. We are talking about how do we enable small businesses, micro entrepreneurs like taxi drivers, store owners and others sort of bring themselves on their own terms, participate in the online economy and use internet to their benefit as it was intended to be with a layer of protocol called Beckett. Now, if you look at the model in which, as, as Nandan spoke about, the model in which the whole economic transactions happen online today, you have this model where you have one company in the center trying to bring supply and demand, aggregating both sides, playing on both ends, bringing them onto one platform and then have the discovery happen. Great model, it's been happening for last two and a half years, it's, it's kind of good, but if you notice, it has this, this concerns around how do we scale, how do we cover everybody? Does it cater to a few people? How do we make sure every form, everybody, whether it's a businessman or a service provider or a consumer, have these choices, have this ability to discover, like Lisa looking for last minute shopping around a Himalayan trek, find it at the place where the person goes shopping, I cannot rely on a one platform or a two platform to solve for me because the problem is too large to be solved by one person and we all need choices to pick from, it's just not possible for one platform to alone scale. And you see this happening not just in mobility, across all sectors where you have this two-sided marketplace model where the, the platform is taking the burden of the entire ecosystem to acquire all the users, consumers, acquires all the providers and then sort of make that interaction happen and let the economy grow on one platform. Now what if, uh, this, this whole interaction, when I mean interaction, I'm talking about how do you start searching for a taxi or searching for trekking equipment, how do I find the one that I'm looking for, place an order, track, then look for delivery, see if there's a delivery is happening on time, and then whatever, do a rating or a cancellation or a return, or, or raise a dispute or a grievance. The entire life cycle happens on one platform, and one platform is orchestrating that end-to-end -end between the consumer and provider. Now what if we were to go back to the model of internet itself, which is decentralized, which has no center, if we were to shift this model, wherein your, this whole systemic cost and the risk that a one platform model has, what you're seeing on the right-hand side, uh, is this model of one platform doing everything, what if we were to redistribute the whole opportunity, burden, and in cost and risk across multiple platforms, unbundle it, open it from the center, and allow multiple consumer platforms to bring in and manage all the demand on the consumer side, bring multiple provider platforms, bring in the supply side of providers, whether it's the taxi drivers or retail stores or all that, any number of platforms can bring all them together and make the whole network work as a system where I as a consumer could be on any platform, not necessarily on the platform where the provider is, and yet able to discover, place an order, and do the fulfillment as if we were on the same platform. Now this idea is essentially how the internet operates. Nandan spoke about how mobile phone operates. I don't have to be on the same telco operator in Germany to make a call from Airtel. So this interoperability is something that was, we think was missing in the whole commerce part of internet, and that's where Beckin comes in. Beckin is this bunch of a, a machine readable language or specification that makes any two platforms talk seamlessly, naturally and discover each other naturally and make this, this uh, make their customers or their providers talk to each other and drive and push the economy forward. And instead of one platform doing it as a winner take all, we have a win-win, winner share all kind of a model where everybody is contributing. What it does, by opening up, it one, clearly you're able to cater to a wider set of demand and supply. You're able to naturally expand the market and drive innovation like the ones that we are seeing in the experience center today, I can combine multiple such 
shopping intent, shopping expressions into one seamless experience and make it much more better for the end consumer or for the provider to acquire orders without having to throw a lot of money to acquire customers first, but acquire business and orders at a fraction of a cost, as you're seeing with the taxi drivers in Namayatri. Yeah? So this model, as you know, it's an idea. It's not just an idea. It's already in practice. We are seeing that with Namayatri in Bangalore. We are also having a mobility network in Kochi where we have 2,000 taxi drivers, the metro, all coming together and offer a seamless open mobility network on Beckin. We are also seeing the national initiative of ONDC, which is trying to take the same model and solve it for retail, the grocery, the food, the hyperlocal logistics, looking at the uh, hyperlocal urban city economy and, and bring a more inclusive open network as an ecosystem, as an architecture for a more inclusive fair and a thriving digital economy. Now, beyond this thing, what we're also seeing from a sustainability standpoint of view, how we know that access to a charging point is one of the limiting factors in purchasing EV cars. Do I get a charging point wherever I go because it's, are there enough charging points? And what if the, the, the car that I buy does not interoperate with a charging operator of some other company who's actually made all the investments in yet not talk? So now we are seeing, and, and, and you'll probably see Praveen and uh, uh, talk about this idea. Using Beckon, we are creating an interoperable unified energy interface to discover any EV charging on EV pro operator from your phone, from WhatsApp, or even from your car dashboard when they start implementing this protocol. You're seeing similar experiences in health, in skilling, and we're also seeing experiences, a discussion in Germany, Hof University, I'm sure Professor Heike will talk about it, how do we put Beckin into manufacturing with Industry 4.0? So Beckin has become this universal language that sort of think of it as the economic highway for smart cities and countries at large to bring them all together and imagine this new way of, of, of discovering resources, discovering consumers, accessing those resources and make that whole interoperability work and happen at scale. Yeah, this is a journey, it's a short journey that we happen. We're already seeing some five networks as I spoke about, and the whole initiative is sort of an open community initiative coming under Beckon Open Collective, and we are seeing fantastic contributions from developers, entrepreneurs, policy makers, designers coming together and making this protocol evolution continuous. We are learning, we are improving with every implementation. Today, Beckon with version one is battle-hardened enough for it to be for a global scale implementation, but thanks to the contribution, from fantastic contributors, part of the Beckon Open Collective. And we already saw Beckon Experience live uh, with Nandan unveiling it, but you'll also see others talk about, definitely please check out the stalls on your right with Namayatri, Protean, uh, Growth Falcon. Uh, they're talking about how they're putting Beckon into action. We'll also see uh, Pulse Energy talk about unified energy interface with Beckon. And then towards the back, you will see how uh, 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 somebody like Venki and Enterprise Men's talk about how we can create a developer collective around backend and build new products which market platforms can quickly adopt so that time to launch to market with something like a backend enabled infrastructure is fast enough. Yeah, and then we have the BOC committee. Yeah, there's a little publication. There's a, there's a little QR code on the day table with backend logo. You can get a digital copy. Obviously, we're not printing it. This is a sustainable city forum. Please scan that and access the digital copy. And that was the little story I want to talk about backend, but do find time to not just listen to backend, but experience backend in action with all the stalls that is set about here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sujit, for that uh, wonderful overview. Uh, it's a challenge to explain so much so quickly, but um, you know, you stood up to that challenge, excellent. Just like the protocol, his speech also is light. Let's give a round of applause to Sujit. Thank you, Sujit.